The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. Hello and good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by the Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, Otis, the boss, Wiley, who's in Chicago, and J.U. Choo Choo Culkrick, who's en route to Chicago. This is a previously recorded show, so we won't be live, but we want to Absolutely. Thank you if this is your first time watching the show. If this is not your first time and you're a long-time listener, we love it. Keep doing it. It means the world to us. It really does. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and go in that chat because I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun going on there. We're going to join in in the chat too, but the game will be kicking off. Obviously, the champion classic in Chicago and United Center. Michigan State is facing Duke today, so that's why the fellas are in Chicago. Support Tom Izzo and the men's basketball team. Let us know where you're watching from as well. Straight, you know, straight. Be, 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 before we go any further, hmm. I see you're what? dressed in black. I'm dressed in all black as well. I just want to give my sincere condolences. Um, this past weekend, uh, we had a passing. Um, who, who passed? Uh, James Joseph Harbaugh. Oh, Jim Harbaugh. He passed away, right? Well, that's what you would think, no, right? He so, so he didn't die. No, no, he didn't die. He was just suspended, man. Um, I, so why I was that. Sharon Moore crying on TV? The Michigan people, they were like, it's like someone died. So what what happened? I I wrote a you. I wrote a eulogy, girl, baby. I wrote a eulogy. <laughs> You wrote a you. Yes, I, I have this thing and everything. Are we gonna get you gonna get Harbaugh's picture? You know, died yeah, in twenty twenty three. No, yeah, I was yeah. yeah. Four 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 hours uh, some stuff. Pull 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 out some more. Pour it out for him. Pour it out a little H two O. Make sure it's half superior. You're pouring out the good stuff for Jimmy. <laughs> when they when they oh, hey, that's sponsors, a <laughs> we can't we can't do it unless there's sponsors of the show. Well, there's sponsors over there, so I guess yeah, <laughs> sponsors over there in the school down the road. No, hey, listen, that was something else, man. You know, we're gonna cover that. We got to talk Michigan and, and what's going on over there with the cheating scandal. We don't really know what it's continually evolving with Connor Stallions and all the things that are happening in Arbor. But we are gonna discuss Michigan State. Goes to Columbus and falls to Ohio State, thirty-eight to three. What's your guys' thoughts? You know, I think there's an element of uh, these life learned hard lessons um, that you know we will have to obviously take on the chin and learn from. Um, I think it's an element of um, you know the guys obviously expected to like compete obviously for this you know opportunity to shock shock the world clearly. It was, this is a money game. Um, but you just felt like it was just, were they that better than us? Or is just from a standpoint of just execution and just the highest competitive nature of like competing to compete? Um, you know, it was just a, we're, I don't think we're that far away from them. Like it showcased for the result on the, on the field there. And that just me and my personal opinion. I don't think we're, the programs aren't that, far removed like we're the bottom tier um based off of what the result like it looks like yes we are far away behind but i don't feel that way but the result obviously is different um so so what are you what are your thoughts on yeah one of the big things that i think is um when you're going into columbus and they're the number one ranked team in the country 
you know, you talk about opportunity. You talk about going there to stun in the world. When we went there, my senior year, Otis, they were number one in the in the in the country as well. We lost that game twenty four to seventeen. You know, a close contested game. I was talking to Coach Antonio. Um, you know, on the sideline, he talked about how the defense balled out a couple of scooping scores, interceptions. Uh, the offense couldn't, you know, couldn't, you know, come up with anything. But, you know, those are the types of things. Games like that, when you go into a hostile environment, when you go into Columbus to play, you have to have everything work out perfectly from the beginning so you can start to build momentum and you get that sense of belief. And then when you look down the sidelines, you'll see guys excited and uh, running through, you know, having, having emotion. But when you go and it is like this and you look up at the scoreboard, you're down 21. If you're playing mad, you're off the sticks, mm-hmm. you know, when someone W, you, you know. So that is something that, ha- you know, mentally it takes a toll on you and you start to second guess and you start to question yourself. And I think that's what came into play with you. Otis, I'm with you with the disparity on that. I think we have talented guys just like they have talented guys. Oh, yeah. It is not that differential. It is not that big. You know, the gap is not as wide as it looked on Saturday night. I think it's it's a little bit with um, the where you were in the game. When things aren't going your way, the season's happening like this, and all of a sudden you're down 21, it's like, oh, no, SOS, same old Spartans. Yeah, it, it was definitely that. And, you know, for that, we're going to look at a stat breakdown brought to you by Maine Financial Group, Spartan Nation's number one wealth manager, Definitely call the guys over at 248-347-MAIN, mainfinancialgroup.com. Secure your future with Maine Financial Group. Guys, the stats were pretty lopsided when you look at them, and you and we're going to pull them up right here. You had offensive numbers just astounding when you look at what the Buckeyes were able to produce. Uh, 335 yards for Kyle McCord, 24 of 31, three touchdowns. Marvin Harrison had a day. He was targeted nine times, had seven catches for 149 yards, two touchdowns through the air, one rushing touchdown, uh, which we'll go get into right here on a little end around play. Uh, Otis, give some color on this one. Yeah, yeah. So before, because standing on the sideline, can we just freeze it right there, Tony? Standing on the sideline, I was right next to you, Otis, and you were talking to some people. You're like, the play's coming back this way. And I think you even might have said for a touchdown, but he said, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, I was like, this is the, the, the play's yeah. coming back this way." What did you see? You know, from a defensive, um, a defensive back, the quarterback of the defense as well back there. What did you see to indicate that the play was going to be coming back to you know the offense's right, defense's left? Well, one like I saw, I remember. So we don't have this showing up, but like they lined up in this, but then they kind of all like look to the sideline to get a check, right? And so we always know, like, who's the best player on the field? It's obviously Marvin, Marvin Harrison. So he's he's closely – his alignment in itself is like this is going to either – this could have been a, a full passing route where he was going to go anyway a deep drag to that opposite side. But, like, I was like, this is coming this way because of the overload nearest to like the field you have the blocker like you got that h back right there tight end off the line and then you have you know this receiver here like the guys are just setting you up they give you the okie doke just to set you up for that comeback on that re- reverse and like we are looking like we even look at our why is our why is our dn like so far boundary like you know what i'm saying as yeah, soon as like you should, yeah. yeah you need to get like let's bump this down because like there was no gap responsibility on the, the the defensive end on the field side. And, like, yeah. once you play this, like, there's no penetration to even, like, look, there's no – like, that's already – this this is a done deal. There was nobody being able to at least turn Marvin Harrison directly back into the other guys for, like, make him turn in. But, like, there was no penetration and no, no gap responsibility here. He's already washed. Um, and this is, this is an element where, like, just the effort, like, the attention to detail – um, just you got to be able to like see and know what like feel the game. That's why I just I just be on the sideline. Just felt the game like clearly. There's so much space on this far side where you got more room to run. And I was like, it's coming this way. <laughs> and then as a corner, as a corner, they they eliminated going to like just chopping right, like going straight for the legs. But like you you can't give up as a corner. You can't give ground. Like you got to at least take it on with one shoulder free. 
and like try to turn it in, like push that receiver into Marvin Harrison. But like you just gave a alleyway or lane for him to just to turn it up and go to the end zone. So that was the first touchdown of many that night. But traditionally, after, traditionally for for you corners that you would you're taught back in the day when you played to chop that and create a pile forever. So the runner had to change his course, but now they made things a little more fair for, <laughs> for the offense. Yeah. I mean, also like, I wonder why, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. would, people like to see points more so than the defensive struggle. It seems, you know, that's why everybody's complaining about what's going on in Iowa with the, uh, their record breaking under streak that they're doing going on right now. They don't have those problems in Columbus. You said it, Otis. You talked about the plus side, the tight end. If you pull that up one more time, you see Cade Stover. If you pull that play up, he's he's standing up in the pre-snap. He's standing up on the end of the line on the far side, in between the receiver and the tackle. Absolutely, he's looking right at our defensive end. This is your point yeah. right here. He's yeah, looking at him. Point. Yeah, you know he's going to seal him. Yeah, and there's so there's. It, it, it's so, it's virtually so impossible in that alignment for the defensive end to, to stretch him and not get hooked. Go ahead. That backer that's up there, should he be yelling, crack, 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 crack? Yeah, or you got, uh, you know, it's crack, crack, crack. And what do we say? You crack and you replace. You don't crack and just go with the crack. You crack, replace, right off the butt, boom. And at the point, this could honestly be a tackle for loss. And, like, e easily, if you just read your keys. Cause like everything is directional going towards the boundary and everything's going left. Like it's just misdirectional. It gets you focused, like miss you know, keys. Like if you get your eyes to where like exactly I'm looking, you'd be able to react like these safeties, man, like the read steps, they should find out immediately. Like as soon as it's happened, they should be flying down and it should be at least, this is not a touchdown. If you obviously do your art, do your role. Right. Zero, zero at this point. Yeah, it's you know, something like things. that too. It's not about X's and O's. It's about the Jacks and the Joes, as they mm. would say back in the day. You find your playmate. Jimmy's in the Joe. You put your, <laughs> you, put Jack. your uh, Jack's yeah, Jimmy. you put your, you put your ball in your best player's hands and have him go out and make a play. Yeah, yeah, and they absolutely did that. You know, Michigan State offensively sputtered a bit. You know, you had Caden Hauser was twelve or twenty-four for ninety-two yards, uh, no touchdowns. Uh, look, it, it it was brought to everyone's attention in this ball game that Sam Levitt has decided to take the redshirt route. Uh, we're going to go forward with Andrew Shorefar as the backup to Caden Hauser. Uh, he did get in the game. He was one uh, one for one, but there was a loss of four yards on that completion when he got in the ball game. Uh, Caden Hauser also was sacked a couple times. Yeah, but I mean, we we also like I think also was saying like. Like, just the defense of, like, just the mindset when, like, Ohio State's defense came out. Like, you just felt like they was ready. Like, I don't care what – like, I don't care what y'all going through. <laughs> it's like – it's like that mentality. mentality. It woe is me. No, nah, we about to beat y'all down. And, like, you can sense that. But, like, for us, man, like, I just don't feel we are – we're calling the plays that fit our guys. Like, we're making our guys look – like we're JV when we have dudes and it's the systems that not supporting the talent we have now. Like that's just a simple fact now. And so like I feel for them because like you go in there, like these calls are not truly honestly don't look like they're made for what we have right now. And it's sad, but like you would want a, a coordinator to adjust to that. Um, and <laughs> to, the, to that point, you're, you're absolutely right. I'm going to ask Jay on this because Nate Carter had a decent day, 11 carries for 56 yards, or 52 yards. He had a loss of four, 4.7 per carry. But Jaron Mangum, who was recently on the show just last week with his brother Jaden, had a nice coming out party, uh, had a spark, nine carries, 35 yards, long of seven. But it seemed like you know it, the success he was having running the ball, uh, they didn't keep going to him. They didn't feed him. Chew, like what? accounts when you see things like that what goes through your mind as a former running back you know it's it's disappointing in a in a bit because what that does is when you start to create you know when you start to have 
a guy like Nate Carter who can who's a slasher, who can run outside and uh, be able to get your yards. And then you have a guy like Jaron Mangum who's an in-between tackle-to-tackle guy, and he was producing, having success running those plays. The thing you talk about on offense from an offensive play caller standpoint, you want to stay ahead of schedule. You want to be in second and six, second and seven, third and two. Make those manageable third downs. And what that's going to do is it's going to continue your drive and keep your defense on the sideline more. The defense was on the field far too long in that game on Saturday. So you have to go. We talked about it. It's not X's and O's. It's about the Jacks and the Joes right now. Um, you got to find your playmakers. You have to put them in position to be successful. And we have not been able to do that as an offense. Um, and, you know, you talk about Sam Levick choosing to take the, the red shirt. So what that tells me, you know, with him choosing to take the red shirt is we, we're going to have to do a lot to keep him in East Lansing. Um, you know, for, you know, that's one. And the two, you know, it's unfortunate that Noah Kim is hurt. Uh, he's been hurt since the third play of the Washington game. So, you know, let's put that out there as well because there's a lot of, you know, speculations going on and everything like that. But the kid, is he's been hurt for a, for a while now, so he can't be even be the backup right now. So it's Caden Hauser's show. We have to ride with him. We have to go on, but we have to find ways to put him in position to be successful. He has to be sitting in there with Jay Johnson uh, on Mondays when, you know, it's a game plan a week saying, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. These are the plays that I think we can be successful with against Indiana. When Indiana's in this coverage, they like to do this. When they walk to safety, they like to do that. Those are things as a starting quarterback at the Division One level you have to do. You have to put yourself in that position so when the game comes, it's a lot easier to do. So there's going to be a lot of learning for Kate now because he's going to go. It's his show now. And Jay Johnson, as an offensive coordinator, has to put him and the offense in the best position to be successful. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned a good point. Like, there were moments in the game where like we had a rhythm going. Like it, we looked like we were competing. It was like driving down, but then like just getting out of the rhythm of like what what is what's the selection of a off like the next plays because it's like you're scratching your head. We just got down into like territory. Like we're about to go in and score, and then all of a sudden you're like, why would we run that? Like, like I said, yeah, yeah, because we we came out of our out of our who we are. You know, Coach Antonio always said that saying, "We are who we are." So be who we are. Caden Hauser is not a drop back quarterback. He's not a guy that you can drop back and put in a pocket and do that. You're gonna have to move him off the spot. You're gonna have to you know do some rollouts and hopefully his receivers run open. When I say run open, is you know you run flood routes so they come open when he's running. He's the type of quarterback you're going to have to do. We saw in the first drive, we drove the ball down there because we were doing things like that, misdirection. And we stopped doing that, and we went to a traditional dropping him back in the pocket, and now he's a sitting duck. I mean, to the point, I never saw Jaron Mangum get caught for a loss in the entire game. But, again, only nine carries for Mangum. I, it would have been great to see him into that 15-plus carry type of night especially in plus territory. That's, you know, you would think a dominant defense like you saw from Ohio State in other games wouldn't even allow a team like Ohio, Michigan State across the 50-yard line, but we were getting deep in the territory, but then it just sputtered at the end. Speaking of the offensive performance by Marvin Harrison, we saw that at, what, three touchdowns, uh, you know, through the air and, you know, one on the ground. Uh, it, Marvin Harrison was against Chance Rucker, a true freshman, uh, cornerback most of the night there wasn't any bracket coverage it didn't seem to be any type of a double team with a guy of Marvin Harrison's caliber you're talking about a guy who may be the number one top three for sure pick in the NFL draft what look I understand losses are lessons so chance will definitely get better from this and I you know I, I do love the fact that the young guy is out there competing like he is but what do you say about that decision to not double up a guy of Marvin Harrison's caliber here guys so I'll go before Otis is the expert <laughs> at this here so he can talk more into it. But I think, you know, Chance was in a lot of good position. That first touchdown that we played, he was in perfect position. Um, I think it's this one here. He, he was in very good position. That was a good throw and a good catch. Um, yes, a freshman back there, you need to – put some help there. You have to help him up because you have to build his confidence. You can't just 
I understand baptism by fire, but there's a lot of different things. You can put a running back in baptism by fire, say, hey, run the ball and get what you can. But when it comes to something like this as a corner, because you're already on an island of, as, as it is, and, um, and corners and DBs are fickle people too, you know, so that confidence, <laughs> that confidence is key, you know, once you start building the confidence. So if you, you needed to do some type of bracket cover, some type of banjo, you know, have that safety walk over to help them out there. And Otis, you would know this better. If you have a corner there and you're yelling, hey, I got you, I got you, I got you, there's still some confidence that way. Yeah, and a great point talking about DBs. Fickle. Fickle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, look, he's just like, look at me. Like, he looked at me, he was like, DBs are fickle. <laughs> hey, tell me when I say a lie. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> like, I, if I'm in those situations, I'm on the field safety. I am, I am that safety in the field. If I'm Mango. I'm sitting there like we have to be able to say we're checking the cover too, Sky. Like going Sky. Like let's give you a nice little uh, you know decoy or you know let's fake like we are in full man on man and you just need to squeeze Marvin inside. Yeah. Don't let Marvin go outside. Release because like at the point like at that you're already you only got your sideline as your friend and you're stretching the safety to get over top. Like he still got to read where if you got, you got, you know, other routes, you still got half hash, hash, uh, hash marks to the sideline. But like if Mangum, if you're looking at that play action real quick and then he didn't really look him off, you got to go straight to where I don't care. Let the other receivers beat us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like let them beat us, let them catch the other, other receptions. But Marvin, we can't let Marvin beat us single handedly. As soon as I see that re that release of ball snap, I see his pass because I'm looking at the keys of the the, the, the offensive tackle and the guard. I'm looking at the route that Marvin sent, Mar Marvin just did. He had the outside release. I'm bursting. I'm straight to like over top, like immediately, because that could easily have been a help with Chan or with Rucker getting Mangum over there just to get a, a, a pick. Now you can use if you play this this clip again. Yeah, because there, there, Otis, to your point, there seemed to be plays where you saw Rucker with playing outside technique, you know, and, and and there was no inside help. Like I don't know what you're supposed to do against any receiver, much less a guy who's got the talent of a Marvin Harrison when you're playing outside technique. So you see, like, go ahead and play this. Like, look at Mangum in his position. Like, oh, you're over there. Like yeah, your hip, that's... your hips, you're you legit covered nothing. Like. Coach D teaches like covering you just, grass. You're just covering grass. Where as soon as this happens, like that's a that's a little a corner. Like that's an easy pick for a corner if he base that that hitch corner. Like that's a league, uh, pro football football just universal. You get picks off of a hitch corner, but this one, you can't cover grass. You got to know where you're where you're at. And then this safety with that the deep ball, like there, where's the safety at? Like I don't like it's just an element where those are those are the young pains that are going down right now, but those are gonna be huge gains next season because these guys are young. Like we still know that they're young. So, you know, I just don't know why you don't get hands on guys. Like you gotta slow down routes, man. Press coverage, you gotta jam them. Cause like if you don't, they get free free releases, it's trouble. So they'll like I said, lessons are learned. There is a victory and defeat. They are gonna look at this. And they're going to get better from it. And next season, you know, not saying we've already turned the page, but this is the ones that we're going to have more vets, more season experience. And you're going to look at Ohio State was like, man, we got thrashed. We got beat really bad. But now I know exactly where I need to be at on the field because that's, that's the difference between knowing where you're at on the field and knowing your tendencies. Yeah, no wasted movements out there. So they all are on the same page and you can get there. When you have great athletes, you cannot have wasted movement because uh, that equals touchdowns uh, in big games like that. Guys, moving on to the next topic. We got to talk about this. I know this is SEC territory, but we're going to talk about Jimbo Fisher now fired as the head coach of Texas A&M, which does now impact the coaching search that Michigan State is going through, correct? Let's talk about that, how this impacts Michigan State's coaching search. So have you guys heard of a guy named Ted DiBiase Jr.? Yes. 
yes. Yeah. So he's a guy um, down south in Mississippi. Have you heard of a guy named Brett Favre? Yes. Sure have. And Jimbo, what's he doing with all them people money? Of them. <laughs> They're taking all them people money, <laughs> stealing all them people money. <laughs> down, he stole it. down south. Mm-hmm. What's it with the people stealing all these people money down there? Jimbo went down there. He's a smooth talker. He talked a big game. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. He rode off the coattails of that great class that he had at Florida State with uh, Jameis Winston, won that national title in 2013. And uh, he took that with him to Texas A&M where he wanted – there they want that instant gratification. It's that scratch-off lotto ticket. They don't want you to build – uh, for, you know, five years down the road, he got the number one recruiting class, um, you know, year in and year out. He had the talented players. Let's, let, yeah, allegedly still taking the people money. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. So le- if he wants to come after us, he can come after us for taking all the people money that he took. Us. You the one that said it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> see, now, see, see how he tried to drag it. He gonna come after us. Hey y'all, we we call. Oh, it's a us. It's a weed thing now. It's a weed thing now. Yeah. I, no. That AD, so, that AD Ross. You gotta hey, stand on business. Come hey on, Ross. Was your, hey Ross. Ross was your, the AD. He plays no games, man. Like as you see, the evidence of like we're gonna show you this big donation <laughs> on the field. Oh, right at halftime. Right at halftime. That was look. that was at halftime. And right there, they already knew they were gonna fire that man, win or lost that game. You see all look, those thumbs up he, there? Yeah, he's like, gig him, like gig him. Gig, we about, gig, him. gig him out of there, boy. Like <laughs> 160. I mean, hey. look at this. This is the 12th man foundation of donors. This is their collective donating 160 million point four seven million dollars. 160 point four seven million dollars to the athletic department. Jimbo Fisher's buyout of his contract is somewhere between 76, 78 million dollars. So and the rest is gonna go probably to getting a new coach. Hey, listen, man, that oil money is long, long money. Like that All is cash like, too. Man, they was like, you know what? That's El Chapo. Rebuild. <laughs> we need to get that's El Chapo. <laughs> oh, that boy. oil is different. That's commodities, baby. That's man. like out of the earth, it's liquid. different than that IPO liquid. money. Yeah, liquid, very I, liquid. Honest, honestly, this is when you know, like, you got to be very, you have to be dedicated. You love this game so much that you're going to try to get another job. When you get paid that much money, you just need to just, it is done, Re- retire. After you, that's the greatest heist. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> just retire. You stole all those people money. Look at Coach O. <laughs> Coach O. Stole all those people money down at LSU too. He said like he, 16. Got a, he got a natty though. He got a natty though. He got a natty, but then he also took that. And then he said because he was the he was the real one. He said, "You gonna give me twenty million dollars? Which door do you want me to go out?" <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like you don't need to work, man. Let's just hey, man. It's at this point, Jimbo like the NIO like he was king being celebrated, and the rise and fall is so quick, and it's just hey. It is what it is, but on to the next. Well, how does how does this impact Michigan State's coaching search? Because I know there's a lot of speculation out there. Michigan State hasn't had interviews as of yet. There's a whole group of people who still are believing in these Urban Meyer legends, this urban legend. When you look at the power of this, you know, Texas A&M is not the only job that just came open, by the way. You have Mississippi State. That's open. Uh, you, you've got, I think Arizona State is now open. There's a lot of other schools that are you know, on the brink of have firing their coach. Uh, there's rumors that there may be an opening in Ann Arbor. There may be something going on in Iowa. There's a lot of places, guys, that are going to be now looking for coaches that are going to disrupt Michigan State's coaching search. I know that we lost Mel Tucker early in this season, but as this plays out, because interviews don't happen, again, until the end of the season. Coaches will not compromise themselves with interviews prior to that happening, either good ones anyway. And so how does that affect Michigan State? I, I don't know if it affects, but I, I think it's an element that gives us the opportunity to control more of like getting someone in here that's going to stick and be here for like fit here. I think there's an element there where yeah, you want to be the first one, but like we kind of already knew, like 
we can't rush this thing. We've obviously had already a, an upper hand leg of getting like vetting compares to comparison to these other um, openings. So I think there's an element like, yeah, it, it will affect maybe the quality of like the tiers, but like we got to get someone in here that's going to be for us and be here for the long call. Like not, this is not a stepping stone. And so you got to look at from a big 10 standpoint and the new conference alignment, this is the best job in comparison to like the, the notoriety, the big glam of like what we bring from a media standpoint. If you're looking at the market, like this is a this is a great job uh, in comparison, like to SEC right now with A and M and Mississippi State. What? Wait, wait. You're you're whoa, telling whoa, whoa, me so whoa, what whoa. you just no, said no, no, on the no, record no. is Michigan State is a better job than Texas A and M. I'm saying from a standpoint of like the 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 conference alignment of the new like future, the future of it, like. I'm saying that not the coaching position itself. I'm saying in totality of the whole job of like where we're at, like you can easily make it here. Then like that A&M is a short leash. That Mississippi State's a shorter leash. I'm saying in that standpoint, longevity for your career, this is a longer game for opportunity for your future Michigan State in comparison to A&M and Mississippi State because we know the SEC is a more cutthroat standpoint of, it's a quick leash. Like we see Jimbo lasted how long? I mean, it's this element. That's what I'm saying. In but, he, but, he, but he walks away with almost eighty million dollars. Oh yeah, and I agree. So, so, so the, so the if, thing is this: the, the thing is this. What do you? If, if you're a coach, what are you looking for now? Yeah. Um, if you you want to go into a program that you are a coach that's a young up and coming coach, an offensive coordinator, a guy like a Brian Hartline or a Lance mm-hmm. Leopold or Mike Eklo you know, at Duke, all these places, uh, the Jonathan at uh, Oregon State, you're Smith. like Smith. Yeah, you're looking and you've seen four donors at halftime with a check that says $160 million. You're like, oh, I can do a lot with this, especially in the NIL time and everything like that. But to Otis's point, yes, the, you get with all that money, all those responsibility, you know, it comes, you know, a sense of you have to prove it. You have to go quick. There is no opportunity to build so if you, the money wise and everything, yes, it definitely affects Michigan State's um, recruiting of a new coach because, you know, they say, hey, you know, there's money out there at Texas a and I can get my guys. I can pay my coaches. I can do those things. So what Michigan State's going to now have to do is they're going to have to up whatever they have to, you know, whatever money that they have. And the collectives have to come together and, and uh, entice a coach to come to East Lansing. So that is what is going to have to happen now. You know, I, this Michigan State just isn't really donor driven. I know that you know, the donors got involved with the Mel Tucker contract, but Michigan State is traditionally not like the SEC. You don't really see that much in the Big Ten at all. A little bit at Ohio State, somewhat in, in Michigan, obviously. But, you know, yes, the conference is expanding its footprint. But Michigan State has is going to have to pay a coach a certain amount of money, right? And and with that certain amount of money is going to become pressures to win. And it not so much the donors that are going to run a coach out of town. It's our fan base. Our fan base, my, especially on Twitter now, X is probably one of the most passionate. Fickle. I use that word. The fickle. Yeah, you want to use that word? <laughs> I, look, they're, they're everywhere. You can't get on any anything that has you know any any comment section when you see a coach being fired or hired or something like that. There's Michigan State people there, right, making comments, and and that you know fuels the propaganda machine, which sometimes is right, and sometimes is incorrect, uh, and and it can work against us. We can run good coaches out of town. We can get we can be upset when we have good coaches because we didn't get a named coach that everyone seems to think will take us to the promised land. There's a lot of pressure at Michigan State as well as it is in the SEC, but it's just from different angles, in my opinion, guys. Like, what do you think about that? You no, know, I, I totally agree with, with what you said. There is that pressure there, but I agree 100% with Otis that you have to get a coach that this is not a stepping stone mm-hmm. for another job. I remember specifically when, we're, when Coach D'Antonio came in, and he said, this is it for me. Um, he was at the, at the time 55 or something like that. He's like, this is it for me. This is my last stop. This is my, this is a destination for me. This is not a, you know, a place to come a proven ground 
this is more of a destination as opposed to a proven ground. So that is something that we need, something that's going to come in. And we're going to need patience from, uh, you know, Spartan Spartan Nation. We're going to need patience from them to get a guy in there to to grow this thing, recruit, bring guys in. And like Cliff Ryan said, we need these blue-collar guys back. We need the guys with the chip on their shoulders from players-wise coming in and wanting to make a change at Michigan State. Mm. Totally yeah, and like I, I want to, I would like, because I know you mentioned like Michigan State, like donors, they're more philanthropic to the scholarships and the endowments of like the true philanthropic, right? Yes. Now, yeah. to your point, SEC is like, yeah, they have, they're that too, <laughs> but they are like heavily all 10 toes down on like the sports. And like we, we have that here. It's just not having, it doesn't have the, the fuel. Like they, they got oil, fuel, they got everything empowering, right? We need some fuel to like kind of turn that attention to like, hey, strategically, this is what we're going to do. Because we have passionate donors, oh, but yeah. they also, they I mean, we're also a donor base who have built their stuff brick by brick. Like there's a different, like a standpoint of like, there's a lot of legacy. There's a lot of long, 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 long money down down south. We got guys that have built things from like the ground up and our our billionaires, millionaires, and they're like a philanthropic mindset of giving and the giving and then supporting athletic. Sometimes just sometimes it doesn't mess. Now we have to change that, right? We're changing that. Um, but I, like you said, we're going to get a guy in here or someone in here that is this place, knows this place, Mm -hmm. And it's not going to fumble. Like they're they gonna they're gonna take care of this. Like you said, like this is this is it. This is where I'm going to put Michigan State back on the map and back to where we were doing with Coach D. So, so you, you you said uh you need someone that's ten toes in. Um, this guy doesn't have ten toes, but there's rumors that uh, Deion, <laughs> oh my goodness, Dion to Texas A and M. Man, it be your own people, man. Your own people, boy. I love Coach Prime. It be your own I, people, I, I love Coach Prime. But he doesn't, he doesn't have 10 toes. As I said at the beginning, tell me when I say a lie. Okay? Um, I'm just I heard rumors so, so to Texas you A&M. Say, do, you you Stephen a? Leaves, do you think he leaves Colorado to go to Texas A&M? Mm. Hey, man. Money talks. You know that. You know, man, I know that God sent him to, to Boulder. God sent him to Boulder. Now uh, the mission isn't complete. Clearly, you still got to pass that collection plate. <laughs> <laughs> but but with that check, hey, can we put that check up there one more time, <laughs> Tony? Uh, hey, uh, uh, God <laughs> <can we t> <laughs> might get trumped by that check Damn. right there. <laughs> yeah, <Boom. laughs> I don't know. Hey, you know, like we should do a full show one day on. The difference between the Big Ten style of you know fan base and donors versus the SEC, I, I think you know what I, I my my hypothesis is it's it's Civil War related, man. It goes way back, you know. I, that, it's something different the way they think about the game of football down south versus the way we think about it. And I don't know who's right, but it it is what it is. Before you go, too, Otis said a little something there that I think we glossed over about. He said, you know, there could be an opening at Michigan. I, I think there's some legs to that as well. I think this is I a lot that. deeper yeah. than you. you said I that. said that. Oh, I, okay, well, whoever Otis said didn't that, say that. I, I think there, there's uh, some legs to that as well, too, because I think this thing, there's a lot more that's going to come out. That onion is starting to <laughs> unpeel a little bit. The tears, your eyes are welling up a little bit. Hey, you are, are going to start on one out. right now. You're on one right now. You, you, you are on one right now. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. Like, look, look. You, you who was it? Uh, we had Rico on a couple okay. weeks ago, and Rico said this is like the last dance for them. This is what they're trying to do. Yeah. Like, because there's no way oh, the president, the athletic director, the whole staff in the entire fan base, all those people who went to Michigan and the majority of them who couldn't graduate from high school, believe that that man was not or this program wasn't cheating wasn't involved in it they They're absolutely naive. know that naive and then they want to talk about due process where was due process last year when the tunnel yeah, incident actually, happened i ain't gonna lie i wanted where was i that? wanted to play i wanted to replay that uh, press conference from last year 
and that same, like you said, that same energy, mm-hmm. you not applying to yourself, your own situation, because you legit went on there just pissed and mad and like trying to like these guys need to be dealt with, they need to be put behind the bars. Is not good enough. Yeah, like doing all that. Come on exactly. now. Come exactly. on now. Yeah. Right. It, it's it's insane, but you know, as the world turns, we'll see how this continues to play out, guys. We got to talk about some good news, man. MSU women's soccer beats Ohio three to nothing in the first round of the NCAA tournament. They look, they about to go to, they got to go to Utah this weekend. So, you know, no more hosting, but they got they start off the right way, and uh, they got a mentality. Like I think that loss. Obviously, you were, you know, I'm in Chicago, so you're I can there. hear Chicago. Here, right? I hear Chicago. Um, <laughs> they, 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 that loss against Iowa in the Big Ten tournament, it was a blessing. Like I told you guys last on our show, like the time that they're able to rest and reset, and they on a mission, man. Like this is an element. Like they're they're not backing down. They, I wish the mentality can kind of trickle down to, uh, you know, the football team because they they got a mentality that's. Not, that's not compared to like the others. Like they are coming at you, and they want to win this. They want to win this all. They want to win it all. Like it's a it's a loss here if we don't go farther. You know, to the point that they their second round game is going to be Thursday against fourth seeded Harvard. Here, yeah. here it goes. Here it is. There it is. Right there. See that family. Family. We got to get one of those. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, I got me one. <laughs> we know you got you one. We, we know you got you, you always going to get. Yeah. Get that. Not even that I, I got, here. I, I I got you boys. I'll get you boys Sorry. one. I'll get you boys one as well. I I, I might know a guy. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you in Bloomington. You got to bring that now. Wait, we got to wait. We got to pause. Like, Chu, you got to show us the. Chu is on the country road tour bus. You want to say I mean, hi to the people? Look at that bus. Provided, that's provided. Looks like he's down below. People? Like that's provided. Looks like he's below deck on a yacht. Let's let's look go. At it. Go ahead, show. We're going. We're going. Look at oh, him. Let's go. What up? What up? Look at him. <laughs> look at what him. Up? Man, you guys are being real good. <laughs> oh look. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we're getting after it a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> so the moment of silence is completed. Okay, that's good, man. You guys are on the on the road to Chicago to cheer those Spartans on against the Dukies. Guys, we're going to talk about a little bit of the Spartan dogs in the NFL. Kenneth Walker III with the Seahawks had 19 carries, 60 yards. One catch for 64 yards with a touch, a little tutty. Yeah, man, listen, man, we miss these guys. For, obviously, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> these, hey, I don't, we knew there was. We knew we had some dogs. Obviously, when they were playing the green and white, but like they are, they are like they're balling. I mean, I wish we had shown that Draymond Green uh, press conference where he's talking about like rookies and you know first players. Like they're coming in more seasoned and more like mentally mm-hmm. prepared, right? And yes. so. Jay, Jay Reed and 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 uh, K Nine man like them boys are they're competing like they're like look I'm not I'm not a young second year player or a rookie like I'm I got juice I've got to put I got to put out I got to have results because like it's NFL stands for not for long so you got to get as much as you can uh, in your in your in your deal here but like Jay Reed's balling Jay Reed's balling I just the dance up oh, 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 the dance like. <laughs> I mean, Jay Reed, you said five catches for 84 yards and a tutty. I mean, he he's looking like he's been in the league for three, four years already. But, you know, if he flashed back to that, remember that Rishi Sear bow when my man went? Man, my man put on a clinic, like straight <laughs> clinic, and look, it just transitions over to uh, in-game. Like, that dude's a, he's a problem, man. I'm, I'm happy that he's balling out. Uh, and Kate and I, I mean, okay, now I got the look, that's that juice. That's that same juice we saw with that Rutgers touchdown and that Northwestern just out like straight Jets. gone. <laughs> <laughs> like that translate. He put on a clinic. Speaking of clinics, you know, uh, Bryce Berenger put on a clinic at the combine down in Indianapolis. Said that you know they've never seen a workout from a punter like they saw there. Four punts this weekend over in Germany for the Patriots. Averaging 62 and a half yards a punt. 
Yeah, yeah. Mi yeah. Michigan State, Michigan State, punter you. You know, got a lot of got a lot of good punters that come out of there, and uh, Bryce is doing a great job in New England. It's that uh, German air that was a little lighter. You know, he was getting that. You know, <laughs> getting those punts off. Yeah, Eckley is doing a good, one heck of a job himself. Um, you know, kicking. You know, he had I think it was like a 45, 46 yard average uh, against Ohio State, and he's doing well in his own right as a youngster in the green and white punting. Uh, right now, though, we're going to take a break, guys, and get back so we can talk about the Champion Classic that's going on in Chicago tonight as we, this show was coming on. Uh, but first, these messages from our friends over at IHOP and SeatGeeks. Drop the pan. Introducing IHOP's new menu with perfectly crispy yet fluffy waffles, warm, flaky buttermilk biscuits, juicy, satisfying steak burgers, decadent eggs, benedicts, and more. It's time to find your new favorite. Don't worry, we won't tell the pancakes. Only at IHOP. Let's put a smile on your plate. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers guy. Game-winning interception. First down. Just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so we can focus on what he does best, smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. All right, fellas, dropping them stacks and them tickets. We love it. We love, to love that. But, guys, the game of the night, Michigan State basketball faces number nine, Duke. 7 p.m. Eastern, so that is already in progress as this game is coming on. This is a previously recorded show, but talk about the expectations as Michigan State now is number 18 after the loss last week to James Madison. Expectations is don't wait. They, it's a song, it's an old, old Christian song, don't wait till midnight. Get going. As soon as you get started, just go. Don't sit here and wait for them to score first. Then the strike, let's just go and compete. And we have the history of leveling up and playing with these big time time games. Like this is the preseason Final Four. And like sometimes the Final Four is not even at this level uh, over certain years, right? So this is an element where you're able to play a top tier team. We are often in competition and recruiting with all three of these schools we're going to, we're, we're seeing um, besides us clearly. And so Duke. Coming off a loss against Arizona, that's a, obviously a good loss. We had a bad loss. I think there's an element of we got to find a true trade ball three-point shooter because, yes, I get it. We can do all that we can and get in the lane and do what we need to do. But I tell people this. Joey Hauser was mm. very – we took Joey for full granted. Like, that man played defense and he will find his shot – when he find it finds it, but we need God, we need we need Malik to be Malik, be a ball, be a dog, like just be a dog, man. Like I don't, I, I'm coming in like this is back. Look, last year we were here, where were we at? We were right here in the same spot, and Ohio State took it to us. First lost Big Ten Conference tournament. We're back home because we wait it too long. We wait too long. Let's just come out striking hot. Let's play on all cylinders. Defense will win this game. Simple as that. <laughs> so he mentioned Joey Hauser, and uh, it just yeah. takes me back to you got Joey Hauser, you got Michael Penix Jr., you got Bo Nix. Like these guys played for like 20 years, it seems like. But uh, you're you're absolutely right. We did take Joey Hauser for granted. He was you know he was a glue for us last year. But you know what? I, I I'm taking a different approach to this, Otis. I think um, November basketball is preseason basketball. I think these these upperclassmen at Michigan State are treating this like preseason basketball. They're getting things right, and uh, people are going to make too big of a deal, win or loss, with this game right now. It doesn't matter till it comes to to February and March. That's when it really matters. So what Michigan State needs to do in this game is work on things in this game here. We have to obviously get better shooting threes. We have to get better making our free throws. Those are things. And we have to play sound defense. But I do agree with you 100%, Otis, that we have to come off to a fast start. We have to start the game fast. We can't dig ourselves in a hole and then try to make a comeback and then start trading bucket for bucket. 
and that just exhausts you. Someone other than Cohen Carr and Tyson Walker has to step up and make a play. I want big things from Malik Carr. I'm, I'm sorry, from not Malik Carr, Malik Hall this game as well. He has to. We come want up. that too. We want Malik Carr too. We, we want, want Malik both. Carr, both that, Malik. We'll about that on Thursday, but Malik Hall has to step up. Speaking of that, oh, so when you brought a three-point shooting, who is in line to be that guy? Who's the person that on is on that roster at Michigan State that can be the three-point threat that we need? It's Mr. Akins. I mean, Mr. Akins, Jaden has a pure lefty shot, right? Like, and I'm not saying that, like, he has, he, I've seen it, in, I've seen it in practice, but I've seen it. We've all seen it. He just, he has to get in that rhythm and, uh, you know, he he also gets in the rhythm by rewarding himself on that defensive end, steals, and you know because he has a quick first step, he can rise, get above the rim, he can get you off of one step, one dribble, uh, and like he is a guy that can be consistently shooting uh, the three ball, like and then Ty, like Ty can shoot the three ball too, but he like you know Ty's like kind of size you up and then gets off and. We just got to create these guys, give them opportunities to to, to be open and not knock it down. Like you got to just knock it down. But also, Jaden is also a guy who's going to continue to shoot, even if it's slump. He's going to continue to shoot because then we got to find it. Um, and I, I really want to see how we can work in the young ex, you know, Xavier. Like we, I want to see how we can get him like playing just a little bit more minutes. Um, but from a standpoint, like defensively, like I think he can. He's got to learn. He's going to have to learn trial by fire. But Jay Nakins is that 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 three point guy for us. So you know, Mike Shashevsky had John. Was it Shire? Is that his name? How do you pronounce Shire? From uh, you know on the sideline oh, yeah. for you know years before he got a shot last year. He's in his second year as coach of the of the Duke program now, and he's got this recent commitment, you know, he's got, got it rolling in uh, the recruiting standpoint. They got number one pick potentially next year, this Cooper flag guy. They've got Jared McCain, who, who's a California kid who uh, I, I spoke to people here in, in California at his school at Centennial. It was, had made 2.5 million before he graduated from high school in just NIL. He's embraced this NIL and seems to be reloading and taking uh, the next step from where Coach Mike Shashevsky left it. Now you have that style in with Tom Izzo, who's a stalwart, a champion, the most consecutive, uh, uh, you know, dance appearances. You know, as, as, you know, as far as March Madness is concerned in college basketball. How do you think this matchup? I know it's November, but how do you think this plays out right now with us being probably an hour into the ball game at this point? Maybe almost almost over with at this point. Look, I, 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 I agree but disagree with, with two of like, yeah, this is November, but this is a, we are, we have seasoned vets and like, these are, these are things that like, we're not a young team. So like Duke is a young team. They will always be a young team because they bring in freshmen and tournament you know, and one, one and out, one and out. We are a, we are a seasoned veteran team. And like the turnovers, like it's just the things that you still are doing that like we have the upper hand on the standpoint of just gameplay as seniors, right? So I think this is a true testament to like how a how we project or tra our trajectory for the season. Because look, the Big Ten Conference is a, is a gauntlet. So like it's this is preparing for like this is the top of the top like matchup, and then every week. Twice a week, you're going to get the same level in the Big Ten Conference play. So, like, longevity, we got it. We got to know who we, we are in this game. And, like, yeah, win or loss, like, yeah, it doesn't affect it. I get it. But you you definitely need to know who you are and what your go-tos and how we play this game because it's going to trajectory. It's going to propel us for this Big Ten Conference gauntlet and postseason because clearly you want to have a – a great record, decent record. Strength of schedule was already high. I mean, we got a gauntlet right now. We're about to go. We got to play Butler. We got to go play Arizona. Like, those are like back to back <laughs> big time games until we get into conference play. Yeah, I, I totally agree with, you know, establishing, you know, who you are as a team, who you are as a program. Uh, Michigan State traditionally has been that blue collar, you know, like the go to work Pistons type of thing. So you have to establish. 
that dominance of who you are. But also, too, what I'm saying as well is don't get too high from this win. Don't get too low if you lose. Just, you know, have that constant uh, flow of who we are and, and go from there. But this is a game that, you know, obviously it's great. You you want to win this game. And I know these guys are going to go out there to play to win the game. But also, too, you know, they got to figure out who we are and work on who we are in these games. So, too, to that point, do you like the fact that they played a tough schedule early on or do you think it's not worth it? No, I love the fact that they played a tough schedule. So they're battle tested throughout the season. Um, you know, obviously you want everyone to come out healthy. That's the number one thing you want to do. But though playing these tough schedule games that Izzo always puts up there gets you ready for when it comes time for March. That's how he earned that moniker of January, February, Izzo, April. You know, that's how you earn that moniker of that. But you have to, you know, establish who you are, but you treat it. You know, November basketball, it's kind of like a preseason. Now, with like all these upsets, we are legit having March Madness games right now. Like people are getting upset at left and right. So, like, like I said, I think college basketball, even playful players are, are they're like there's players every team now uh, versus like blowouts. But like we're seeing magic right now, March magic right now in the month of November, starting college basketball. So You're, there's elements there where I just, it's going to be, it's going to be electric. Cause like the blue bloods, everybody is a blue besides us and green, which is all, always great when you go in there, like everybody got some blue in theirs, but we all green baby. So Spartan nation, like we got to turn up and I'm hoping as this is airing, we are, we're back to back battling with those Duke blue devils. And we are going to come out with a dub tonight. Let's go. That's right. You're, you're seeing you're seeing that you're you're seeing that uh trans that um you know March Madness types of game and ever because of the transfer portal. You know, I think that's what it is. But my question is how the hell is it because it's James Madison, you go from rank fourth to nineteenth in in the standings. 18th, yeah. <laughs> I mean I mean you did it you A bad hey, loss. Let me say, like, done and dusted, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, ee, that's a that's a hell of a fall. <laughs> yeah, it's like the writers are pissed off. We're like, here we go again. They drop, you know, that's that's a lot of spots to fall off of one loss. And, and Duke had a loss, too, right? So, look, guys, like, it, you know, you got Will Team and the Max Stegen go on the call tonight, which started at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. for you guys. You know, Chew, you guys, you are be careful on that road out there. Otis is safe. He's in the hotel. He's just got to ride it on into the United Center. He's going to be good with it. And, and like, so, you know, one one other thing, you know, we got to make sure we know that we mentioned Indiana. That's the game that Michigan State football is going to be playing. And we're going to break that down on Thursday. That is uh, going to be kicked off at noon Eastern time. Uh, it's going to be on Big Ten Network and Spartan Media Network. Broadcast for us starts at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, 10.30 a.m., <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and some people are going to be flying in there with their hair on fire. But definitely <laughs> watching very closely, and we're going to need all of you guys' analysis tomorrow or like when we when we meet again on Thursday about what happened tonight at the show, at the game against Duke. Guys, great show. Uh, we'll let everybody get to the TV so figure out what's going on and listen to the calls if you are tuning in. For Will Team and then Matt Stegenga. But for Otis Wiley, J.U. Choo Choo Culprit, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is part of MSU. Have a good night. God bless you. Go great. Go great. This is Sparta MSU is a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbara, Tony Gastella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On location technical support provided by Good fruit video. Be sure to follow our host Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This Is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support and as always, go green.